Hi everybody. This time our photography locked down creative challenge theme is the devil is in the detail. The hashtag is appearing on screen right now. Please use that hashtag when you upload your pictures. What is a PLD creative challenge? It is what it sounds like a creative challenge to help you grow your creative skills because your camera doesn't take the picture you take the picture. The camera's just the tool that you use to do it. So you have to stretch that creative muscle and that's what these challenges are about. Please click the little thing popping out above me right now. Come find out, come join in, come meet the lovely group of photographers that we have. Something I see very often is a photographer showing me a picture and they've got too much going on in it. Sometimes people comment on my own images and going, yeah, but you know what, if you took it from that angle, maybe you could get the church in and the vintage car and the aeroplane and the swans and the geese flying over and suddenly you don't know where to look. So this time your creative challenge is all about seeing details and to do that, you have to disassociate yourself from your surroundings. Let's look at a couple of ideas. Let me give you some direction. And then I'm gonna give you a video that you can go and watch, which I think is gonna help you with this disassociation process. But first, let's check out a couple of pictures. So what have we got? First of all, I need to tell you that you don't need a macro lens or something to shoot detail. None of these shots, which I'm gonna be showing you now, have been taken with a macro lens. They're mostly taken with an 18 to 55, some with a longer focal length, but none of them have been shot with a macro. Let's look at this disassociation thing. Well, it's really obvious, isn't it? Some little mushrooms, something like that, growing in a forest. You have to disassociate yourself from the forest and concentrate on the mushrooms. This would have been taken with my little 18 to 55 mil lens. It's what I use all the time. Why does it work? It's because we've got soft, gentle light and a soft, gentle subject. We've got nice, simple colors and that sort of thing works. Close up of some fish. Again, not macro. This is just taken with the standard 18 to 55 lens and it doesn't have a macro setting. It's the light and shade that is really bringing about the textures in these fish. You've got to look at where the light and shade is falling. This is all part of disassociating yourself from your surroundings as well. Learning to see light because light is invisible. You can see the source and you can see what it's landing on, but you can't see the light. You can only see the bright bits and the dark bits. Learn to search those out for yourself and it will really help you with your creativity. So we've got some grilled fish here. Now this shot I think is a great little detail shot. It was taken in a very crowded, cramped little cafe during a one-to-one -one day. We were talking about various different ways in which you can interpret an idea or a theme and how you can frame a picture. So what we've got is a couple of mugs and I just kind of made my lens 55 millimeters and just focused through the handle of one mug on the other. And it just kind of works. It's a simple, simple picture, but it's a great detail shot. But in order to see that shot, you've got to pre-visualize. You've got to think about what is going on on this table? What have we got? What if I looked through the handle of this cup at the cup beyond it? These are the sorts of things you think about and then you work back from that idea to find your camera settings. It was very dark in there. This shot was probably taken at, mm, I reckon, getting on for 3000 ISO and it's fine. Don't panic about such things. Really, really simple to do. Another cafe shot. Again, it's, you know, a cup of coffee and a sandwich and a, and a couple of salt cellars. It's just like playing around with those camera settings to find a way to find detail and to tell your viewer what it is that you want to look at. In this case, the cup of coffee. The sandwiches and the salt cellars, you know, the cruet set, that's completely secondary. How do we do that? Really simple. We use a big wide aperture, don't we? Now, what about when you go into a larger environment? So this is under a road bridge where a river goes underneath it. And it's really easy to go, oh, look, a bridge but then we're looking at the too much of the big picture. What's going on under the bridge? Walk around things, look at things, consider what works. And you know, we saw this little bit of graffiti on the other side of the water. Well, the water's flat and smooth, so there's a great reflection going on. What about the concrete? Use those lines creatively to draw your viewer towards it. I just thought it was quite amusing. Somebody wrote, my feet are wet above a river. And we got that great little reflection. Remember, this isn't about interpreting the theme 
perfectly as in detail. How, what is detail? It could be anything. It's finding that detail. This is about stretching your seeing abilities and using it creatively. A dull day next to a lake. It was raining, it was drizzling, somebody had made a little can of stones and I just thought, you know what, that would make a nice little simple picture. It's a little detail within a great big open area. Okay, this was an exotic location. It was in Iceland next to uh, an ice lagoon where, where we run part of the workshop. You don't have to go somewhere special to find details. Don't forget, we found a great little detail shot in a crowded cafe. It's about seeing and noticing and thinking, how do I execute it? How could I work backwards from this? How can I separate this little can of stones out from the background? Well, in this case, technically, it was slightly different. I used a much longer lens. I used my 200mm, I think, and just used a wide aperture because a long lens has, is better for, for shallower depths of field. If you want to know more about that, you're going to need to join in on my Focal Length Explained webinar. Little pools of light. Again, this isn't a close-up a macro, but it's a detail. And the thing here which is creating that detail and bringing it to life is just the light on those leaves. Then you just got to think about how do I position those things in the frame? So the light's hitting the leaves on the left, it, the leaves behind are in the shade, and that's what makes them pop. It's all about seeing things and separating yourself from the environment, because to the left of this is a tea shop. You can't see the tea shop. You've got to disassociate yourself from all of it. Again, it's a little detail in a landscape, in an area. And I do know this was taken on my 18 to 55 because I remember taking it and I know I was using my little Fuji. <laughs> what you can't see here is a church. And it'd be really tempting to think, oh, I could get the church in the background as well. You don't need the church. It's going to distract from the little plant poking out in that lovely little pool of sunlight poking out through the snow. Food, and again, look, light. You see how we're focusing on the cheese, we're playing with camera controls such as depth of field to make us really, really look at that cheese. And there's some beautiful light going on it, going on, on it. Okay, I tilted the camera a bit for this, and for my mind, I think it worked. You don't have to put a tilt on something. I just think in this case, it worked to have a subtle, gentle, little diagonal tilt going on. Something that's very important to remember, don't just look at your subject within the image, look at the whole image. That means looking all the way around the outside, all the way around here, down that side of the frame, along the bottom of the frame, all the way across here, and up this side of the frame. Run your eye all around it. Don't just look at the subject because it's the whole picture that works. Even in my office, this little shot is carefully composed. Look, just on the edge of that monitor and just on the edge of that picture behind me. It isn't just by chance. You've got to look at the whole picture and think where you position your subject within your shot. Again, light. Notice how much importance and emphasis I'm putting on light. It's a newspaper, just in a, in a you know, little thing of newspapers in a hotel where I was doing a shoot. Yeah, that background's burnt out and it's bright, but I think because the newspaper is sharp and dominant, it overpowers it and it gives it the feeling of a bright sunny day. I get the feeling of sitting by a bright window with a load of newspapers next to me. Maybe it's a wintry sort of a cold morning. These are the feelings that you can create. This shot, it's a detail. Why does it work? It's not just the light which is okay, but also complementary colours. Think about those. Red and green, they're best mates. Most of this shot is red, but that makes that pop of green stand out. This was literally taken through a window, walking down a street uh, on Lanzarote, where I run a workshop. It was just looked through the window and went, wow, look at that brilliant red room and look at the green light, look. And then it's a question of where do you position things within the space? I like the rectangles on the opposite wall compared to the shape of that green lampshade. Yeah, there's a little bit of gold going on in there, but it's very simple. Less is more. Look out for those details. Another very, very simple thing. This is a wooden bench on a beach. So we've got sand and a wooden bench. Now, you may or may not like this shot, but I just liked those textures. The light is helping with those textures. It isn't strong sunlight. You can tell that. How can you tell that? Well, look at it. Are there any strong dark shadows anywhere? 
No. Therefore, the light was soft, pretty flat. But we've still got nice shapes and textures strong in that bench. Where you choose to put them in your viewfinder, compositionally, is of course entirely up to you. I chose to twist and move and rotate the camera around in such a way that it was coming in from, the ang from an angle from the corner. Why not just have it in the middle or straight on? Because that's how we usually see things. And the whole point of this is, is to make something eye-catching, a little bit different. How often do you see those textures in that way? Now, you may not necessarily like the picture, but it is going to make you stop for a moment and go, what on earth's that? And that's the whole point. We want someone to dwell on our picture just for a moment. And you don't have to see the whole story to get the story. It was at Southampton Airport. It's a busy, cluttered, messy place. Yes, I'm lucky we had a great sunset going on. But if you look down in the lower right, lower left, sorry, corner, you can just about see down there that there is a little bit of white and the wheel arch um, is kind of slightly hidden behind the Lancaster wheel of a fuel tanker that was refueling the aircraft. So if I didn't want to get all that clutter in, I had to play with focal length, make the lens a little bit longer so the field of view was just that little tiny bit narrower so that I could exclude the clutter. The light was beautiful on the aircraft, the sky was great. But had we included all the clutter, all the sheds and all the other stuff going on, it just wouldn't work. It would be too, too busy. You have to learn to see these things. This is another very busy place and someone uh, posted a picture from this place in our last PLD challenge. And, you know, I totally sympathise because her shop was a bit busy. And this is a busy and awkward place. In this case, by using a longer lens, I could isolate a detail at down at Key Haven, at the, the little harbour there. The sun was going down to the right of the shot, the light is washing across this boat, and by using a longer lens, a wide aperture, then we can create a shallow depth of field and we can tell the viewer where to look. We can pick out on a detail. The devil is in the detail. If the boat's behind was sharp too, it doesn't work. If we could see the whole of this pretty little harbour, which is a wonderful place to walk around in, you just think, this is gorgeous, I want to photograph it. But when you try and get it all in, it doesn't work. It starts to get too busy. Many places are like that. You need to learn to see and look and notice the detail because that's where it all is. Another famous location, this is St Mary Axe in London, a building called The Gherkin. The question here was noticing what the sky was doing, what the whole environment was doing, and then thinking, hmm, is there a shot here? What could we do? I loved the geometric patterns, the repeating patterns going on in the side of this building. Google it, the Gherkin, or uh, St Mary Axe, London. You will find all sorts of stuff about this. But it's about being aware of your environment, looking around, seeing what's going on, noticing the sky, noticing the clouds. Wow, the sun's just gone behind that cloud. Look at the rim light on those clouds. Right, how can I position myself to get a shot that juxtaposes the regularity, the man-made repetition of the glass building against that gorgeous, amazing, strong, powerful, natural sky? But to do it, you've got to look around. You have to concentrate on your surroundings and not just walk around looking at the ground, chatting with your friend and going, oh, seagull, do you know what I mean? You need to look around and concentrate and constantly ask yourself questions. How can I isolate something from here? What can I disassociate from so that we can pull a piece out from our surroundings, something that makes an interesting shot? Which brings me to this one here. It's in a little back street again on the little island of Lanzarote. Um, we're walking down there on a workshop and just going, look, we've got a great blue sky. Ingredient, what can we do with it? We've got white buildings. Oh, white and blue, they work well together. Now the street's kind of busy. If we get too much in it, it's not gonna work. Can we find some shapes? Can we think of ways to position those shapes within the viewfinder it's just a compositional thing. It's only a question of moving your body, of tilting the camera up, twisting it from side to side, etc., in order to find the composition that works. Underneath this video, I have put a link 
to a video which I made when I took this shot all about how to disassociate yourself from the surroundings and I think it may help you with this so please click the link go have a look you will be able to find out how this will work for you and I'm sure it will help you so there you go give this your best shot the devil is in the detail. Find ways to find those details, to see those details, because it's your seeing of details and the asking of how can I capture them, which makes for powerful eye-catching pictures. It's not your camera. It's not your settings. This is your creative challenge. Look for some details and then find great light and interesting compositions to bring them to life. So good luck, guys. Go for it with this challenge. I wish you all the best of luck and I look forward to seeing you in the live judging, which we will be doing in 10 days time. The date is on screen now along with the hashtag still. Please do not upload archived images you already have. There's no point trying to practice something if you're just going to your archive and going, oh, that might fit. These challenges are not about winning. They're about doing. They're about growing. They're about working out and getting exercise. I will see you in the live judging. Meanwhile, good luck and take care of yourselves.